acidifiers and antacids, gastrointestinal agents. The learning objectives for this lecture is as follows. So let's start by introducing the gastrointestinal system, the GIT system, which includes the main parts, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, and rectum. For this topic, we will be discussing on the stomach. The stomach is an organ that digests our food. In the stomach, a specialized cell will secrete an enzyme called pepsin and hydrochloric acid in order to digest food, namely proteins. The hydrochloric acid is a digestive juice that breaks down food particles into their smallest form to aid digestion. So in some conditions, inadequate secretion of acid in the stomach can lead to a condition called hypochlorohydria, which then can cause low food digestion. There is also a condition where there is hyperacidity, where excess secretion of acid in the stomach. This condition may cause stomach ulcers and gastric pain. There are also other undesirable conditions or disease in the stomach, for example, accumulation of gases, diarrhea, constipation. However, in this lecture, we will only focus on hypochlorohydria and hyperacidity. So, administration of acidifiers and antacids can help to overcome these two conditions. As the name suggests, acidifiers can be used uh, or administered when there is low stomach acid or there is not enough acid in the stomach, which is a condition for hypochlorohydria. And in hyperacidity conditions, antacids can be administered to overcome the excess acids. We are going to look at each of these, and now we are going to look at acidifiers first. Acidifying reagents or acidifiers are drug substances taken to increase acidity in GIT. It is mostly to increase the gastric hydrochloric acid. There are four types of acidifiers. Gastric acidifiers, urinary, systemic and also acids. We will be focusing on the gastric acidifiers. Gastric acidifiers are drugs to temporarily restore the acidity in the stomach. Patients suffering from alcoholism, tuberculosis, and hypothyroidism may suffer from hypochlorohydria due to simulation of histamine. Also, patients with stomach carcinoma and other diseases can cause lack of stomach acid secretion. Therefore, acidifiers can be administered. The most common acidifier to be administered is dilute hydrochloric acid. This is a monograph of a dilute hydrochloric acid. Talking about the ingredients, how it is prepared, the properties, the identification test, purity test, and the assay. So I'll take you through this first monograph. For example, for dilute hydrochloric acid, the properties, it should be a colorless liquid, strongly acidic, and has a specific gravity of 1.04 to 1.05 gram. So to identify if it is true hydrochloric acid, it has to comply with two tests. One is the neutralization test, and second is when hydrochloric acid is added to potassium permanganate solution, chlorine gas will be liberated. So the test of purity for hydrochloric acid we have to test for if there is any presence of bromide and iodide. By diluting the hydrochloric acid in water, adding chloroform and also chlorinated lime, 
the chloroform layer should not become brown or violet. If it does become brown or violet, it means that there are presence of bromide or iodide. Same with the others, checking for sulfate when the hydrochloric acid added to water and barium chloride. This solution should be able to reduce the iodine color when iodine solution is added to it. If it does not reduce the iodine color, therefore it means that sulfate is present in the hydrochloric acid. And to test for free chlorine, the chloroform layer should not become violet when the hydrochloric acid is added to water and cadmium iodide and chloroform. If it becomes violet, that means there are free chlorine. Okay, this assay is to check the amount of hydrochloric acid in the solution. So it uses the acid and base titration and also the metal orange as an indicator. So this rationale, each mil of 1 molar of sodium hydroxide is equal to 0.03646 gram of hydrochloric acid. So this can be used for the stoichiometry to calculate the amount of hydrochloric acid in your sample. So there is only one type of acidifiers, so we can move on to the antacids. So antacids is used to counteract on hyperacidity conditions. It is used to neutralize the excess hydrochloric acid in the stomach. Therefore, they are usually made out of alkaline substances. So the criteria of a good antacid should be the following. It is insoluble in water and are fine particles, not absorbable or can cause systemic alkalosis, can exert effect over a long period of time, should not be a laxative or cause constipation, is safe to use, stable and give immediate effect, should not yield too much gas after neutralizing the stomach acid, and it should buffer in the pH range of 4 to 6, and it should inhibit pepsin enzyme. When taking the antacids, you just need to remember that antacid can alter the stomach's pH, so it's not recommended to take with other medication, as this might alter the technical properties of a drug. Antacids can also decrease the bioavailability of iron and some other vitamins. So the common antacids are as follows. There are four. 1 aluminium, 2 calcium, 3 magnesium, and 4 sodium. So we will look at each of them. Aluminium, there are two types, aluminium hydroxide gel and aluminium hydroxide tablet. So this is the monograph for aluminium hydroxide gel. So you read it just the same as we did earlier. You look at the properties, the identification, how it is prepared, and the purity test, and also the assay. So the aluminium hydroxide gel, how it works is it reacts with the hydrochloric acid in our stomach and neutralizes the acid in our stomach. So this is the reaction on how it works. As for the properties, it should be white and viscous and it can also contain methyl oil, peppermint oil and so on. So it can be prepared by sodium carbonate and potassium alum and you will get sodium sulfate, potassium sulfate and aluminium hydroxide. So this aluminium hydroxide can be isolated to make aluminium hydroxide gel. To identify that it is pure aluminium hydroxide gel, when you di dilute it in water, the pH should not be more than 7.5. Aluminium hydroxide gel is considered pure when there is no presence of arsenic, chloride and sulfate. It is also considered pure when it passes the acid consuming capacity test. The assay is using a complexometric titration method. So this is how you check for the purity to make sure that there is no chloride and sulfate. And also, this is how you would conduct the acid-consuming capacity test. 
Below is the procedure for the assay of aluminium hydroxide gel. The aluminium hydroxide tablets are actually aluminium hydroxide gel made into tablets. But if this is the monograph for aluminium hydroxide tablets. This monograph will be further discussed in the class. So the second common antacids is calcium, which is calcium carbonate and tricalcium phosphate. This is calcium carbonate and the monograph for calcium carbonate is as such. Again, we will discuss this monograph and the rest of the monographs in the class. This is the monograph for tricalcium phosphate. So the next common antacid is magnesium, magnesium carbonate and also milk of magnesia. This is the monograph for magnesium carbonate. And the monograph for milk magnesia. And the last common antacids are sodium, sodium bicarbonate. And this is the monograph for sodium bicarbonate. So have a read on the monographs and we will discuss it in class. Thank you.